by the time this video comes out, I should have seen the new Mario movie, which I'm super excited about. But while talking about the movie with Koi Fish Gaming, I came up with a rather interesting idea, and this gave birth to Guardians of the Marioverse. With that said, let's go! Mario Quill was born on Earth, the son of a human mother and an alien father. He was plucked away from his home, taken away to be in the stars as a plumber for a bunch of rogues. Well, space thieves. Over time, Mario branched off from plumbing on the spaceship to joining his new family, taking on a range of jobs from fixing space plumbing to stealing objects of great value. It was on one job for the latter that Mario discovered that his calling may not be just to fix space pipes or even to steal or do odd jobs throughout the galaxy. As he got older, Mario Quill often took jobs by himself, preferring to work alone and get the full benefits of being paid for his work. From stealing rare artifacts to smaller jobs such as fixing plumbing, over the years he became an expert in all types of plumbing on spaceships, stations and various worlds. Despite many people going after this rare item, a purple glowing block with a question mark on it. It was contained in an ancient ruin that had a high intensity energy barrier around it. Although this didn't seem a problem for Mario Quill as he looked around the room and saw what appeared to be water pipes that run into another part of the building. This gave Mario an idea. He went over and opened a valve on the pipe which started to flood the room with water. Using his stompers, he started to float through the air. As the water became electrified from the barrier before it shorted out, allowing him to head over and take the purple block. When leaving though, he was ambushed by a bunch of mercenaries and the purple block was taken from him. The mercenaries stole his ship and left with the spoils and Mario's only way off the world, or so they thought. It was a little while after that Mario regained consciousness and noticed his ship was gone. He was stranded and decided to go back to the ruins to figure out his next plan of action. Mario decided, as he was stuck on the planet, he would investigate the ruins to see what else could be found. Maybe another spoil or if he was super lucky, a way to get off the planet a communication device, a spaceship, something. It was while he was walking deeper and deeper into the ruins, he started to see some glyphs on the wall that looked like a set of random pictures. Over time, Mario started to think there was more to these random glyphs. It seemed like they were telling a story about a strange tube that could take people to another world. Mario was unaware if this was actually reality or just some kind of strange language and pictures. I mean, the device shown could, send people to the afterlife for all he knew? A few hours later, Mario found a room filled with large green pipes. As he walked up to one of the pipes, it started to make a strange noise as a portal opened up in it and he could see another room with another set of pipes. However, the room looked different from the rooms he was in. It seemed to contain a different set of glyphs and the room was a different colour. Curious to see if it was something visual like a monitor, maybe showing some kind of recording, he put his hand up towards the image and he felt a force pulling him forwards and once he touched it he saw a flash of light. As he opened his eyes he was in a state of shock. He was now in the room from the image. This room was also filled with pipes. It looked to be a different set of ruins. Thinking he had been sent to another part of the planet that he was stranded on, he started to wander around. As he made his way out of the ruins he was met with a massive surprise. He was on a completely different planet. Mario had been transported to another world. This was something that only superpowered beings were capable of doing in the time it took for him to travel through the portal mere seconds. With that in mind, he headed back to the room with the pipes and began to walk around, looking where each of them led. Some didn't open. Perhaps they were no longer connected, or they were just broken. This was a game changer, and once he found a familiar place in one of the portals, he went through it and was in the ruins of a planet known as a trading outpost for all kinds. He was sure to be able to get a ship here, or even better, information about who ambushed him. Despite this, Mario didn't know that he in fact had a twin brother he was taken away at a young age to the stars as well. A brother whose fate would reunite with his. While he was still young, Luigi Quill was taken from the hospital by a strange figure in a dark cloak. They took him to a strange ruin on Earth which had one of these portal-like pipes. The strange figure entered one of the blue pipes with Luigi. In a flash they were transported to a world where the stranger handed the child over to a rather strange looking humanoid alien with green skin and red tattoos. This person that Luigi was handed to happened to be an incredible genius who had lost his family and over time became obsessed with his research and experiments. After taking Luigi back to his lab, the stranger performed several scans and confirmed that Luigi did have the DNA from a very specific alien race mixed in with his human genes. However, it was enough that he decided his experiment could continue. 
being one of the last members of his race, the scientist, for lack of a better term, decided that it would be perfect to fuse the genetic coding of his species with that of Luigi. His goal was to create a successor to his race. He felt that using the hybrid DNA of this child would be the best condition to ensure the alteration was successful and provide the strongest chance of survival for the subject. After the merger of another alien's genetic code into Luigi's already hybrid DNA, Luigi had a few occasions where he became extremely ill, and if it wasn't for the knowledge of the scientists as well as the advanced technology in his lab, Luigi would have died early on. However, the fusion of the DNA turned Luigi's skin a green in colour, and over time he developed a red tattoo-like pattern on his body. Although he did grow a moustache, that was the only place that any hair seemed to grow. He remained bold and seemed to have a rather simple mindset when it came to things. Often wanting to battle and believing he was able to take any attack, he did have a straightforward and honest expression of his feelings. It was almost like his mind had snapped or he was a few quasars short of a galaxy. In order to ensure his subject was able to survive most encounters, the scientists taught Luigi the basics about surviving in space. However, he decided to teach Luigi how to fight as it would be a better use of his time once he discovered his test subject had a lower than anticipated intelligence level. It became apparent that Luigi was extremely skilled as a fighter and was able to use most weapons effectively. With that said, he did have a tendency to prefer a pair of daggers as his weapon of choice. As he grew older, Luigi asked the scientist what his name was, realising that he didn't actually know. The scientist paused for a moment and turned to him. Your name is Drax Eegi Quill. He then explained that he was a very special and unique, the only one of his kind. Most of what was explained went over Drax Eegi's head, and several years later the scientist passed away, but not before creating a rather unique friend for his subject. One that was a fusion of two types of DNA, this time in order to see if he can increase the simple-minded subject's intelligence to one that was near genius levels. Several years before the scientist passed away, he decided that he would see if he could find a way to increase the intelligence of Draxigi. Due to this, he took a member of the Mushroom Empire and a raccoon from another world. He fused their DNA together. What resulted was a very strange creature with the features of a humanoid raccoon and a mushroom. The top of the head had a large white mushroom with red circle shapes, joining onto the head of a raccoon with brown fur, which also had a red circular pattern on it. The fashion sense of this hybrid creature was a bit strange, a yellow and blue vest type item with a white set of pants that looked more like a giant nappy. It oddly suited the creature, at the same time it did look a bit out of place. At first, the fused creature wasn't able to speak, even though the fusion of DNA was more than just introducing the genetic code of two creatures. This time, it was using a kind of teleporter device to break down and combine the two subjects into one. There had been several attempts to do this in the past that were, well, unsuccessful to say the least. This was the first time the fusion of two test subjects had resulted in a living and stable creature. Over time, the scientists performed additional experiments, adding cybernetic implants under the fur to the body of the subject. These implants allowed Rockad to have more control over his motor functions for a neurochip that was implanted at the base of his neck. This enabled Rockad to walk around like a humanoid as well as to switch to moving on all fours like a raccoon. It took several months of chemical testing and bioengineering to achieve the results of intelligence being increased within the test subject. Over time, as the intelligence increased, the tests the scientists gave for CAD became easier and easier despite the difficulty of these tests increasing. It wasn't long before CAD had the ability to build almost anything out of pieces of scrap laying around the place, as well as developing a couple of behavioural traits. The first of these traits was a type of obsessive compulsive disorder, where he would want anything that interested him, a metal arm, tech that worked as an eye, or anything he just wanted, often leading to a bizarre personal challenge to get the item, or to get others to get the item in question. Initially, when Rokad was introduced to Draxigi, the two of them got on super well, almost like they were brothers. Well, in a sense, they were brothers of a fashion, but like most things, this wasn't to last. Rokad discovered that he was created as a friend for Draxigi, and the experiments were to see if there was a way to increase Draxigi's IQ. Even though it wasn't through any fault of Draxigi's, Rokad couldn't help but feel a sense of betrayal, giving birth to a form of resentment towards his only friend.
Well, I've got to say, I really enjoyed this video and quite enjoyed doing the artwork for this one. Taking the Guardian of the Galaxy kind of style and characters and fusing them with the characters from Mario. I think our first three came out really well. If you want to see another video of Guardians into the Multiverse and see what I do with the other characters, then be sure to like this video and leave a comment below who you think I should include. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out Enter the Splatverse, the video where our narrators meet for the very first time, linked here. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Stay safe, everybody. Catch you next time.